So in our last video, we talked about circles that were all centered at zero, zero. And so in this video, we're going to learn how we can shift those to be centered anywhere else. General idea is one that we're going to see um, many times in this unit of when we shift anything left, right, up, down, uh, to shift a graph horizontally a certain number of units, you'll simply take the x out of the equation and replace it with x minus something. Uh, if you want to shift something vertically, you'll simply take the y out and replace it with y minus something. And therefore, um, the equation for a circle that's been shifted and has its new center at h, k, with a radius of r, is this guy. x minus something squared plus y minus something squared equals something squared. So that's a good one to remember and highlight. Let's see it in action. So next uh, example, we need to graph the circle with this equation, x minus 2 squared plus y plus 4 squared equals 25. So how should we do that? Well, here are the steps I would suggest you would do. First of all, find the center. And the center is pretty easy to do. We simply look at this chunk here and figure out what does x have to be to make that a 0. You've done that before, graphing square roots and everything else. Um, similarly, look at what does y have to be to make this chunk zero? And that's the center. Once you've figured out where the center is, figure out what the radius is. We did that in the last video too. So look at the r squared value and figure out what r is. Once you've done that, you can draw the circle. So looking at this, two would be the x that would make that a zero. And negative four would be the y that would make this a zero. And so that means the center of this graph is at 2 and negative 4. So that would be about here. Once you know where the center is, we can find the radius. The radius, uh, let's see, it's, this is where r squared goes. And so 25 must be r squared. If we take the square root of that, that would be 5. And so I have to draw a circle with a radius of 5. So I'm going to figure out what point is 5 steps to the left and right and above and down. So let's see, one, two, three, four, five. I want to make sure it goes through this point. And one, two, three, four, five. I want to make sure it goes through this point and so on. So there, that's about it. On uh, paper and pencil, I like to actually just put a little dot here, five points to the left, a little dot here, a little dot here, a little dot here, and draw my circle around them as best I can. Second example has a little bit of a sneakiness in it, um, but same basic steps. I'm going to try to figure out where the center is. What makes this one a little sneaky is that this x doesn't have that uh, parentheses part about it. Um, that actually means that it, horizontally, this graph hasn't been shifted. It's still centered at zero, but vertically it has been shifted. Uh, specifically, uh, if y was a five, that would make this a zero again. And so that means the center of this graph is zero for the x and up five for the y. Once we know where the center is, then we can look at the radius and try to find some points and draw the circle. The radius here would be, uh, let's see, 16 is r squared, so square root of that is four. And so I want to find a couple of points that are four units to the left. So about here and four units above, that puts us at nine. Four units below puts us down here. And four units to the left puts us about here. And so there's our circle. One more graphing example. Hit pause if you want, see if you can find the center and the radius, and then we'll draw it in together. So this circle is centered with an x-coordinate of 6. Let me uh, shift this to the back second. Here we go. And a uh, y-coordinate of negative 3. And so that would be about here. And the radius would be 10. And so I'm going to try to find some points that are 10 above 
uh, 10 above negative 3 would be 7, and so about here. And uh, 10 below is off the graph, and so, <laughs> oh well. Uh, 10 to the right would be 6 plus 10 is at 16, and uh, 10 to the left would be 7 minus 10, or sorry, 6 minus 10 is negative 4, so that would be about here. And I can do my best to draw the circle through those points. So, what if we need to write an equation for a circle? So, if we're going to do that, we need a template. The template is still x squared and y squared and r squared, but uh, instead of just x, we're going to subtract something from x. We're going to subtract something from y. So, I like to use this guy right here. x minus something squared plus y minus something squared equals something squared. So, let's see. This says we want an equation for a circle that's centered at 3, negative 7, with a radius of 4. And so, that means we're going to subtract a 3 from x. We're going to subtract a negative 7 from y. And we're going to subtract a... No, we're going to say the radius is 4. So, 4 squared over here. And there are times when this is a perfectly good answer. But a lot of times people will clean this up a little bit by writing this not as minus negative 7, but as y plus 7 squared. And sometimes instead of writing it as 4 squared, which emphasizes the radius, we might multiply that out and write it as 16 just because it looks a little cleaner. Here's another example. What about the circle centered at negative 10, 0 with a radius of 5? So once again, here's the template, x minus something squared. In this case, I'll put a negative 10 there. And uh, we'll put y minus something here. The y coordinate of the center is 0, so we'll put a 0 there. And the radius is 5, and so we can put 5 in here. Again, that works, or a lot of people will write this a little bit cleaner as x plus 10 squared. And this part, they might just write as y squared without any parentheses at all, like that example we saw earlier. And of course, 5 squared is 25, so you could write it that way if you prefer. Here's another example. What if we wanted the equation for this particular circle, which I graphed in Desmos? Well, uh, let me write in our equation here. So I can make it a little too big. And uh, i got to figure out what the center of this circle is. And so here, it's not quite so obvious, but um, it's going to be halfway between 8 and 12 horizontally. And so that should be a 10. And vertically, it looks like uh, it ranges from 4 up to 8. And so halfway between those, the midpoint would be a height of 6. And then the radius, let's see, from the center out. If this is the center, which was 10, we have to go two spaces to get to 12, two spaces to go up to 8, two spaces to go back to 8, and two spaces to go down to 4. And so the radius is definitely a 2. Now, if that was all you had done, was write this equation, you would get a circle, but it wouldn't be shaded. And so as a reminder, inequalities are things that have shading. And so if we want the points on the inside, the points with a smaller distance, you know, closer to the center than a radius of 2, uh, then we need to replace the equals in this with a less than. Now, if we had a less than, this would actually be a dotted line because points that are exactly 2 away wouldn't be true and wouldn't therefore be shaded. And so what we really want is an, uh, less than or equal to. On a Mac, you can press Option and less than and get that. At least I thought you could. Option, less than. Eh, maybe not. Less than or equal to. There you go. Oh, maybe it's showing. You just can't see it. Oh, well. You'd think I'd know what I'm doing, but uh, this is all still kind of new to me, too. Anyway, I hope you... Um, 
are able now to both graph an equation that's been shifted or to write an equation for a circle that's been shifted. And so good luck. Let me know if you have any questions.